Hey, folks. The eye has awoken. The illumination has begun. The world will forever be under the control of us. The great society of the Illuminati. We control everything from the president to Beyonce. And we do it without one single leaker anywhere. Hail Satan! Wait, hold on. What is the Illuminati? Are they... real? Hi, I'm Tristan Johnson and this is Step Back History. Illuminati. It's a word that goes back pretty far, all the way to the 15th century. It's very literally the plural form of the Latin word Illuminatus, which I also think is a Harry Potter spell. Either way, it means to reveal or enlighten. Various groups over the centuries have called themselves the Illuminati or the Enlightened Ones, fundamentally considering themselves unusually enlightened. To be fair, you have to have a very high IQ to understand the Illuminati. The humor is extremely subtle and without a solid grasp of theological physics. Let, let's begin with the first Illuminati. To them, the source of light that illuminated them was from a higher source or a better understanding of human intelligence. One such group popped up in Spain called the Alumbrados. The ideas behind the group go back to the Christian Gnostics and their views came to Spain through Italy. One of the earliest leaders, someone sometimes referred to as the pre-alumbrado, was a woman named Maria de Santo Domingo, who went by the name La Beatra de Piedraita. She was no one fancy, just the daughter of a simple laborer from Salamanca in the late 1400s. When she was young, she joined the Dominican order and became famous as a prophet or mystic who could talk directly to Jesus and Mary. The king, Ferdinand II, invited her to his court and spoke with her often. The Dominicans were not too happy about this mystic and appealed to the Pope Julius II for help. He ordered a series of trials under the umbrella of the infamous Spanish Inquisition. However, her powerful allies kept her pretty safe from punishment. This was not so true of some of her followers. Saint Ignatius of Loyola had to speak before a church commission charged with sympathy with the Alumbrados, but he only received a warning. The church imprisoned or flogged other not-so-fortunate members of the Alumbrados. Many members of the order were victims of the Spanish Inquisition afterwards. The movement left Spain, though, and moved to France in the 1620s. There, they went by the name the Illuminé. It attained prominence when a famous curé or minor pre-Reformation Catholic clergyman named Pierre Guérin joined in 1634. The French began to suppress this group the next year. Another offshoot of this group were the Rosicrucians. Their group mixed Christian Gnosticism with some Jewish and Egyptian mysticism, alchemy, and the occult. Their writing recounts their supposed leader, Christian Rosencruz's travels around the Middle East, including to a mythical city called Damkar. There, he supposedly learned the secret wisdom that he brought back with him to Germany to found the order with. A few famous supposed members include the alchemist Michael Mayer and the legendary Sir Francis Bacon. However, these groups are not the Illuminati your uncle or Alex Jones tells you about. That honor goes to the Bavarian Illuminati. It was a very short-lived, Republican with a small r, movement that popped up in 1776. The members, called Perfectibilists, wanted to end Christianity and replace it with what they called a religion of reason. They were edgy atheists of their time. The group modeled themselves on the Jesuits and kept a stable system of mutual surveillance and discipline. The members were split into three classes. At the bottom, you have novices, Minervals, and lesser Illuminati. In the middle, you had the ordinary Scottish and Scottish knights. At the top, you had the mystery class of priests, regents, magi, and kings. They began as a tiny, tight-knit group, but gradually gained new recruits throughout Bavaria. They looked for young men who had money, status, and popularity. They began to reach out to Masonic lodges and slip into leadership roles there. Every member had a particular code name. They communicated with a cipher and utilized different mystical names for towns and provinces. At its peak, the Bavarian Illuminati ranged from Denmark to Italy, but never got over about 2,000 members. Plenty of famous 18th century writers like Goethe took an interest in the movement, and there are rumors that there were many more famous members that still circulate today. 
Organizations like this are secret societies, and were pretty popular during the Enlightenment. Enlightenment thinkers considered it a sort of benevolent despotism that many thought would be necessary to push society forward. However, the movement started to suffer from a lot of infighting, and the Bavarian government banned the order in 1785. Some members went to prison, and others were exiled. Some other groups took the name Illuminati up after this, such as the French Martinists which were a group that mixed Kabbalism and Christian mysticism. This seems to be where the story of the Illuminati ends, but conspiracy theorists claim that they just decided to go more underground and take over the world without a single leaker or any more of the internal dissent that plagued it before. Like the Masons, they've been blamed as a boogeyman for every single major historical event and portrayed by the conspiracy media as an omniscient, all-powerful cabal. Oh, and don't forget that they worship Satan. As you can imagine, there is no evidence for these claims, and no matter how many ways you fold and draw triangles on the American dollar bill, it doesn't mean that the world is run by an evil cabal. If anything, it's even scarier to accept the reality that the world isn't run by anyone. Think about that one for a while. If this is your first time here and want to see more, be sure to click that subscribe button down below and hit the little bell notification to make sure you don't miss new videos and live streams. If you want to keep up to date on my comings and goings, I spend a lot of time on Twitter. I'm at TristanPEJ. Come and say hello! I want to thank all of these patrons, especially Don and Carrie Johnson, for their support of Step Back on Patreon. The theme is by 12 Tone, and come back next time for more Step Back.